Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today we're going to ask the question, can you regrow a damaged tooth? And I think the answer is, we are on the cusp, if you'll pardon the pun. So let's talk first about some changes in overall anatomy that I'm noticing with the jaw bones. One thing I've seen lately is a lot of images of weird bone growth in the mouth. Um, they're often calling them tori. Uh, it's a here is a couple of uh, images of it where there's the mandible and there's these weird bumps here. They're calling it uh, extra growth of the fossa here. Okay, here's another example of it where these bumps of bone are growing out. Now apparently this is not super uncommon. They're saying that 5 to 7% of the U.S. adult population has these tori. Did you know there's an oral disease that affects 5 to 7% of the U.S. adult population? This condition is called mandibular tori, which causes pain and discomfort, and some of its symptoms are almost unnoticeable. So it causes pain and discomfort, or, or the symptoms are almost unnoticeable. In fact, they're saying later that you may have it and not even notice, and it's not a problem. What is mandibular tori? This condition occurs on the inner side of the lower jaw, Taurus or tori is a benign bone growth in the mouth. In 90% of the cases, there is a torus on both the left and right sides of your oral cavity. This oral abnormality normally does not cause any serious damage. It will cause discomfort, and if the growth continues, mandibular tori can cause pain or disturb malfunctions. This is the interesting part, though. The size of the tori may fluctuate throughout life. In some cases, it can be large enough to touch each other in midline of mouth. But what's interesting is this fluctuation because they're saying that it can grow and then also reduce through life. So there's a, a weird ability to grow and recede and grow and recede. And this is your mandible here. This is your bone of your mouth that is able to both grow and recede throughout life. Supposedly, it stresses on the mandible that is said to cause this tori. Inflammation, loose teeth, uh, slurred speech, sore jaw. Okay, so what do these look like? How do you know if you have them? Well, it's pretty obvious if you're one of the 5 to 7%. Okay, this is what it usually looks like at the top of the jaw, like a big weird bump thing. I mean, it looks like a tumor. It's hard to believe that this is supposed to be benign. And for the lower jaws, it's usually along the side here. This can actually grow so big as to go all the way to the middle, supposedly. So that's Tori. Now here's another thing I've discovered recently. I saw this one in Reddit, and it went viral. So they're saying that this dog's tooth, this dog lost one tooth on the lower part, and so this top tooth grew in to cover for the lower tooth. Never heard of such a thing. I've never heard of a tooth continuing to grow after adulthood. Um, in my old time, they would just stop growing when they were done growing. They wouldn't just keep going like that. Um, I've known a million people who were missing various teeth, and they did not have additional growth on the upper teeth. But apparently that's a storyline now, that the other teeth can grow in and fill for a missing tooth. Now, I do admit I've heard this in the last year or so, I've heard people saying that their dentist told them this, and they had not known about it previously. But the storyline is you if you lose a tooth, you better get it replaced because the, it'll screw up the line of the other teeth. Now, I had thought they meant that the other side teeth might slide over a little bit, but no, they're actually saying that that uh, additional teeth tooth growth will continue, like on this dog. You can see that this dog, the tooth, is about twice as long as it originally was. So what, what causes super eruption? The emergence of teeth is governed by balance of forces. The bone is trying to push the teeth out. This is a weird statement. The bone is trying to push the teeth out, and it continues to do so until the tooth meets opposition for your teeth in the other arch. This force keeps the teeth in balance. However, there are several reasons why your teeth may become super erupted. Wear damage to teeth, bad bite, loss of opposing teeth, poorly fitted restorations. Teeth wear used to cause super eruption of the teeth all the time. Here they're saying that in the old days when people would grind down their teeth from eating coarse food or having too much sand in their food, that the tooth would continue to grow out and make up for this 
this loss of material on the top. Now, I have never heard of this, and I have really studied a fair number of times and heard the stories of how people in the old days would grind down their teeth and uh, lose a lot of their teeth due to harsh food, and especially sandy environments where there was a lot of sand in the food. I never once heard anything about the teeth continuing to grow. So this one's kind of a trip for me. So they're saying a bad bite can cause your teeth to become super erupted if only some of your teeth are contacting properly. The teeth aren't making regular contact can, can become super erupted over time. If you lose a tooth, you need to replace it with a dental implant or other roster, restoration to maintain the proper balance among teeth. So the crazy thing is I I know a lot of people haven't done this. It's not like everybody has a high-end dental insurance. So anyways, so here we go. Um, how often is this happening? According to this report, 92% of unopposed teeth uh, will, in this, uh, in this one research, super erupted with an average of 1.68 millimeters and a maximum of 3.99 millimeters. So it looks like they can super erupt up to four millimeters, which is pretty far. This is the article, the, the clinical prognosis of implants that are placed against super erupted opposing dentition. Now, an interesting part is uh, later down here, they say in the discussion, super eruption of an unopposed tooth is well known as, and has been focus of many studies. I don't think it was well known. In fact, nobody I know knew about it until the last year or so. Compa Companion and Woda classified super eruptions into active eruptions and periodontal growth. Okay, so periodontal growth is the key word here. Periodontal growth is when uh, the, the actual teeth itself, the bone in the region, grows. So now they're saying that um, super eruptions can be caused by actual bone growth as well as just having the tooth pushed out further. An active eruption was defined as tooth eruption out of the socket without a change in the periodontal tissue. But according to this, sometimes it's a change in the periodontal tissue and growth. Periodontal growth was defined as growth of periodontal tissue, including alveolar bone. Now, this is kind of a weird thing because they're saying that periodontal tissue includes bone. But anyway, so alveolar bone can extend and then push the tooth out further if it's um, either ground down or if another tooth is missing. So basically, they're saying here that there's, there's tooth bone growth. The, the bone underneath the tooth can grow. So anyways, that's the part I really wanted to cover on there. So here's talking about what's alveolar bone is the thickened ridge of bone that contains the tooth. So again, it means that this bone can push your tooth out and grow if need be. Okay, here we see an image of a fang tooth in a cat. Now, if you think about this, this one here is supposed to be super erupted. But what's interesting is if you really start to think about it, fang teeth in animals often do not have an opposing tooth. They stick out separately. You can see this little kitty. Uh, there's not much here. And that question was asked in a number of places. And the answer that was given was that the tongue or just the lips is enough pressure to keep the tooth in. And it really doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot of pressure against this tooth here, but it's just a little bit of fur. I mean, the tongue probably isn't going to come down here very much. So the storyline seems a little weak to me. However, um, I've never seen this in a cat, and I've seen a lot of old cats, but the storyline now is senior cats may exhibit a thickening of the alveolar bone surrounding the canine teeth. Again, this is interesting because this is a bone growth here, and they're not really explaining exactly why it would thicken. But anyway, it says especially the maxillary, maxillary ones with a concurrent super eruption of the teeth, making them look longer than normal. So here is this mouth of this older cat with the thickened alveolar bone and the longer teeth. Uh, it doesn't really explain exactly why this happened, but I, I guess they're going to be saying that there is a lack of pressure against these tooth, teeth, so they super erupted. 
It doesn't really explain the thickened alveolar bone, but um, I do want to just mention, again, this is bone growth here. So this bone can regrow. I, I've just never heard of any bone growth happening when in the older, once a person is past the regular growth period. Okay, so can we regrow bone? So far what we've seen is that the alveolar bone can grow and then also the tooth can get pushed out past its normal distance. So that can help make up for any grinding down. But basically, if your tooth is ripped out or gone, then that's not really going to help you. But it is interesting to me because this is both types of growth that I never saw before in my old timeline. So it's like we're almost there. And now if you look in the scientific field, there's been a lot of breakthroughs that are coming down the chute as well. Um, this one, novel ultrasound system can regrow dental tissue. Um, they talk about a um, ultrasound system helping to stimulate growth, including growth in the root. This is another one here. A new discovery about a drug developed for Alzheimer's patients may replace fillings for cavity repair. Tidy Gluseb stimulates stem cells in the pulp of teeth, promoting new dentine production and natural tooth repair. So again, you're still going to need to have your teeth. I mean, you can't have a completely absent tooth in order to do these two methods. But it sounds like we're on the cusp. And one thing that I've really noticed lately about the ME is that um, things that we want to have, like, for instance, uh, no more dental problems, seem to happen on two fronts at once. One thing is that our own body seems to change to make it more possible and more uh, flexible in that direction. And then at the same time, we start hearing about these breakthroughs that are right on the edge. So it's almost like the two are working in concert. So anyway, I personally think what this sounds like is that a growth of new teeth, growth, tooth repair, that kind of thing, we will get that soon is my personal guess. I mean, I don't know the future for sure, but it sure looks like we're heading in that direction. So good news there, at least. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline. Thank you.